Hi right, guys. Chapter 12. Extremely happy hook. The pirate attack was, com was a complete surprise. Hook had broken all the rules the pirates and the Indians normally followed when they fought. He attacked in neither the time nor the place that was allowed. When it was all over, almost everyone was injured. Only Tiger Lily managed to escape unharmed. Finished, the pirates still could not rest. It was, after all, not the Indians they came for. They were just the bees to be smoked out so they could get to the honey. The pirates wanted the Lost Boys and Wendy, and most of all, Peter Pan. Peter was an awfully small boy to inspire such a big hatred in Hook, even if he had thrown, a, thrown Hook's hand to the crocodile. But there was something about him that enraged Hook. It was more than Peter's courage or his cuteness. It was his cockiness, his absolute confidence in himself. This is something many children have, but most grown-ups have lost entirely. Perhaps Hook had lost some of his, too, and wanted it back. The question was, how could the pirates get down the hollow trees? which were perfectly sized to allow each individual Lost Boy down, but no one else. Below, the Lost Boys were still trying to figure out who had won the battle. It was, if it was the Indians, they reasoned, they would beat their tom-tom drums. It was always a sign of victory. Perched at the edge of the hollow trees, up above, the pirates heard this. Smee happened to be sitting on a tom-tom, which Hook ordered him to immediately beat. After a moment of confusion, Smee understood and smiled. Bang, bang, bang went the tom-tom drum. The tom-toms, the pirates heard. The pirates heard Peter cry. The Indians have won. Let's go up and celebrate with them. The Lost Boys cheered and Hook ordered his men to take their positions and get ready for the boys to come up through their trees. The first to emerge was Curly. The pirates threw him around like a ball. From Cecio to Smee to Starkey, then Bill Jukes, then Noodler. One by one, all the boys were plucked from their trees and tossed around in this manner. It was, to say the least, a different kind of flying than they were used to. The pirates then gagged and tied the boys up. With Wendy, the pirates behaved differently. After all, she was a lady, or rather, a little girl. And even pirates have some manners. When they emerged, Hook offered. When she emerged, Hook offered her his arm and bowed so elegantly that she blushed. When they tied her up, they used the softest rope they had. They had apologizing and making sure that they weren't hurting her. When it came time to tie up slightly, however, the pirates found that it took far more rope than had with any of the other boys, and Wendy. It turned out that Slightly had been sneaking so many snacks lately that he had grown greatly. In fact, they had come. there had come a day when he no longer fit in his tree. How he had gotten into in and out of the cave each night while the other boys slept, he had he had secretly started to widen the hole of his tree. Why are you so much bigger than the other boys, Hook demanded. You are practically as big as a grown-up. While the pirates found extra rope to which to, to which to tie him up, Hook had a brilliant idea. He knew how he was going to get Peter, who was still down in the cave. He signaled for the other pirates to take the Lost Boys and Wendy to the ship and leave, the, leave him alone with his plans. Tiptoeing over to Slightly's tree, Hook saw that it was now wide enough to let him through. He listened for any sound from down below, but it was all quiet. Was Peter asleep? Was he waiting at the bottom of the tree with his dagger in hand? The only way to find out was to try. Hook took a deep breath and stepped into the tree and let himself fall. When he hit the ground, he crouched for a second, waiting for his eyes to adjust to the dark of the underground cave. Finally, things began to take shape. In the corner, he saw a great big bed and Peter sleeping on it. For once, Peter wasn't pretending. He was unaware of what was happening above. He believed the Indians had won the battle and that the Lost Boys had gone up to celebrate with them. He was happy for the Indians, but lost, the Lost Boys were going to leave him, and Peter didn't feel like celebrating. Oh, how he had pretended not to care, but he was very sad. And when he got sad, he got sleepy. Today, he was so sleepy that he didn't even dream. It was in this sad, deep, dreamless sleep that Hook found Peter. As he stood over the bed and looked down, Hook felt slightly sorry for the boy. After all, Peter was only a child, and Hook wasn't completely evil. But then Peter smiled in his sleep. Perhaps he was dreaming something after all. And that smile seemed so arrogant, it made Hook angry all over again. Hook saw a glass of water on Peter's night table, and he knew exactly what to do. In case he should ne ever be captured, Hook always carried a small bottle of 
poison with him. Taking it out of his pocket now, he added a few drops, drops to Peter's water. Peter would wake up, take a sip, and fall to the ground. With one last satisfied look back, Hook climbed back up Slightly's tree. Once above ground, Hook tilted his captain hat at a fashionable angle, wound his back cloak black, wound his dark cloak dramatically around himself, and stole away through the forest. Uh oh. Chapter three. Chapter thirteen. Carried off.